Hi. Welcome to the loading screen. It's been great. We've been here for 84 years. Are we going to get to a title page? Please tell me this is an actual, uh, you know what, whatever, I'll just talk to my audience. Hello you beautiful people, I'm Alexandra TG. <laughs> and welcome to the bottom of the well. Um, oh, we do have a title screen, yay! So, I don't know much about it, it was free on Steam, it was highly reviewed, it was an RPG puzzle interactive story game, I'm not fully sure. But it involves Alice in Wonderland, and I love Alice in Wonderland, so we, we might as well give it a try. Also, this game took over half an hour, almost 45 minutes, to get up. Like, it took me 45 minutes to actually get into this game, so it better be worth it. Everything better be recording. Everything better be recording. I don't want anything to go wrong. Welcome to Bottom of the Well. This game is a visual novel, meaning it is a mainly text-based piece of interactive fiction, a book where you get to decide what happens next. Most of the gameplay consists of picking your choice from a selection of options, which will further the story. Okay. Bottom of the Well does have some gameplay, aside from multiple choice, though the most important of which is the kind of Alice, our protagonist, you are going to play. Are there multiple kinds? For the first playthrough, your first playthrough, we recommend you use default Alice, but the customization is there to be used. Okay? Even if you complete the game, a different Alice might have a different, a very different experience. Not just a different experience, a very different experience. If nothing else, you might just find a new way to die. Did you just spoil the entire game for us? Are we going to die? Aw, alright. Well, is this default Alice? Supplies, survival, fitness, career, social life, <laughs> dating, exactly, dating? <laughs> no. Let's just use default. Dark Alice. <gasps> Different time. Well, let's just go default. They recommended default, so. Okay. The default Alice is capable of finishing the game to its true ending, but not necessarily through all the branches. This Alice is career motivated, friendly, somewhat lazy. A hopeless romantic with no survival skills at all, she makes a- This sounds exactly like me! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, let's just go. We already picked the perfect me. Oh gosh. Dream diary. Today I had the weirdest dream in my life. I am waiting for Joe to come online so I could- ah. Morning. We have to give- I'm going to assume that's the Mad Hatter. Morning, a eh? Morning? What am I supposed to know? Did you catch the anniversary reading last night? That's probably a really crappy voice. I don't do well with voices. No. Well, I tried, but I fell asleep. Listen, about that. fell asleep. Oh, come on. Alice in Wonderland is like our favorite. Let me finish. Something happened. I was turning in on my radio. You're such a lud lud ludite. Lud what is that word? Amazing. I can even catch you online. Shut up. I am not a whatever that is. I just like Analog things. That is not correct English. Aren't Okay. Anyway, I was tuning into the broadcast and I must have hit the AM switch or something because suddenly the channel changed to something else. What? Aliens? Oh, oh. Government run number stations? Oh, oh. <laughs> I am terrible. No, it was this weird, like, white noise at first. It's hard to explain why I was so drawn to it. I could hear snippets of some melody, maybe lyrics, but the signal was weak. So you turned it off and continued looking for the Alice broadcast. So I went out on the balcony and turned the antenna around until the signal came through clear. It now sounded more like music with the odd signal in the background. 
When logic and proportion have fallen sloppy dead, and the white knight is talking backwards, and the red queen's off with her head. Oh, I know this song! White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane! Oh, so somebody's pirate radio broadcast of golden oldies. It felt like there was something else there, some message that the music was hiding. I know it sounds weird, and then I fell asleep. What a story. No, hear me out. I dreamed, and I didn't know I was dreaming. Do you understand? It was entirely lucid, but like, like waking up in another world, except I didn't think of it as another world. Ugh. Does this make any sense? No! You had a super lifelike dream where you didn't know you were dreaming, but you were still lucidly in control. Sounds pretty rad to me. I'm sure it would have been, except for the whole end of the world apocalypse bit in the dream. Oh. Yikes. Okay, now you've got my attention. So like I said, it was the end of the world. Everything I did that day felt like the real thing. Every smell, every sound, every color, every touch. It's important you know that I wasn't acting like I would in a dream. I didn't know it was a dream. Heavy. Mad H. Mad Hatter. Duh. <laughs> there was no warning, no build up, nothing. Just between one moment and the next, the TV had turned to the emergency alert system and this voice that sounded like it had been recorded in the 60s told us we were under attack. Were you alone? Yeah, I had had a really long day at the office, so I had sworn off all social contact for the evening. I had the TV on in the background, just as noise. Wait, what? The office? You mean you've got some kind of real adult person job in this dream of yours? Yeah, actually. At the college student admissions office. Hey, don't sound so surprised. I am going to graduate in just a few months, you know. Uh-huh. With a BA in English Lit. She is getting her Bachelor's of Arts in English and she was messing up grammar. No judgment, no judgment, no judgment. Shut up. <laughs> Such skill with words. Anyway, what happened next? Like I said, this TV suddenly turned to the emergency alert system. Jacked the volume all the way up to... I didn't even know they could do that. Oh, jacked the volume all the way up too. I didn't know that. Okay. The broadcast told us we were under attack right now and we needed to get to a shelter that we had less than 30 minutes before the bombs hit. Jesus. Sounds scary. At first I didn't want to believe it. I switched the channel, but they were all the same. And then the sirens started. Tornado sirens. Flood sirens. I don't know. And I knew things were serious. I just noticed this, uh, time, date, place and stuff here. It is not Sunday, September 18th. Clearly. It's not almost nine. It is cloudy though. <laughs> So what'd you do? Ooh. I immediately tried to call Chess. Chess? Oh, Chess. Who's that? My, um, boyfriend. Okay, she's no longer me because she's in a relationship of some form. I mean, I don't have a boyfriend, but in my dream I did. Oh, <laughs> then it is me. Dreaming of having a boyfriend. I am relating a little too much to this, except for the whole apocalypse thing. Wait up. Tell me more about this sudden new boyfriend of yours. I thought you weren't in the dating scene. Actually, I've been thinking about putting myself out there. Like, maybe some online dating or something. How old are you? Although I'm kind of afraid to check OkCupid right now. What if there's a guy there named Chess? Good icebreaker. Hi, I'm Alice. I dreamed about you last night. You were my end of the world buddy. Funny. Aren't I just? 
You were saying about chess. What kind of a name is that anyway? I wasn't really. I mean, yeah, he was pretty hot, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and smart and into me. What more could you ask for? Personality? I can sense you blushing all the way over here. Maybe I, oops. Maybe I should check my OkCupid profile actually. You have one already? So what did your boyfriend think? Well, first I tried calling him, but all I got was a pre-recorded network busy message. But the net still worked, so I hit him up there. I mean, we did most of our communications and chat anyway. And, and I found him, but there was no time for, well, anything. I started typing, you know, holy hell, WTF is going on style stuff. And he just tersely replied he had to go. That's a little blunt. He told me he needed to go get his sister. His sister? How come? Maybe because the world is ending and he wants to protect somebody he loves. He'd mentioned her a few times. She's disabled, but lives in a house by herself out somewhere in the burrows. Did he ask you to come too? He didn't ask, I did. I'm going to be outside my apartment in five minutes, he said, then logged off. I guess that's an invitation of sorts. So what did you do? Well, I knew that Chess wasn't going to wait for me. If I wanted to go with him, I had to go right away. Just grab my stuff and go. Making quick decisions in the spur of the moment doesn't sound like you. So what did you do? In the spur of the moment, yes, it's you can be very methodical, you can be very organized like Alice is and like I am. And usually I would have to think about options, but if you have such a short amount of time, every moment counts, so you have to make decisions immediately. So you don't have time to think about your options. I went with Chess. So I decided to go with Chess. I mean, how couldn't I? He clearly needed help. And yeah, if his sister's disabled, he might need help with her. Altruistic. How long had you been dating? Cynic. Long enough to know my feelings were real. I mean, they felt real in the dream. This is definitely a dream. Where did the sister live again? In the borough, practically the suburbs, so pretty far. Chess said he usually takes the subway or a bus. Chess actually lived just down the street and we always had a customary place to meet. We didn't even need to confirm the place anymore. But it didn't seem very likely he would be able to catch a bus or the subway. Yeah, because the apocalypse is happening. <laughs> so how were you planning on getting to the sister in less than 30 minutes? Oh, spoiler, the bombs didn't start dropping on us within 30 minutes. It took longer than that. They did start though. That's lucky. Yeah, well, it didn't mean we weren't in a hurry. <laughs> But you didn't leave empty-handed though, right? All right, yes. I grabbed the biggest bag I had. A backpack. <laughs> okay. People always called it magic. You could fit so much into it. Bigger on the inside and all that. That's true, I, I usually... Oh. Oh, okay, well. The what? Take... Flashlight? Take food, take food. Can I fit everything in there? Oh, no, okay, only three things. Cool, what are these? Okay, so I can't like stick something in my pocket, what's this? Okay, I guess we need to have that on us. Um, shoot. We don't need spare clothes. Not in the apocalypse, no. Everybody wears the same clothes in the apocalypse. We do need food, though. 
radio. Are you sure we can't take that? Okay, fine. Go on, Burrow, sister. Bombs incoming. How did you plan to get there in the chaos? The chaos. Yeah, the streets were nuts. Everything and everyone was going crazy, crashes everywhere, but no one was responding. The street was completely gridlocked. I'm talking maybe 15 minutes after the first announcement here. All it takes is a few cars in the wrong place. 15 minutes? I would have expected like three. But you live pretty centrally, right? It had to be better further out. Did Chess have a car? No. But if we wanted a car, there were tons around. People just left them keys in the ignition and ran. Sounds about right. Holy shit. It must have been... It mu It really must have been... been I'm sorry. <laughs> it was. I was so scared. So, steal a car or walk. We discussed walking. It was like 14 miles or something. It'd probably take us at least four or five hours on a good day. And this wasn't a good day. Maybe a good start though. Things might clear up outside the downtown area and you might be able to steal a car there. Appropriate a car. Stealing sounds so criminal. <laughs> Whatever you say. Any other options except stealing? Appropriating a car and hoofing it? Something in between. I know a guy with a motorcycle. He really loves that motorcycle, but I wondered if maybe he'd be willing to borrow it. I mean, for fuck's sake, we were going to go rescue a disabled woman. You know him well? Reasonably. I didn't know you knew how to drive a motorcycle. I'm a woman of many talents. So what did you do? Well, we can't walk. Fully. A walk out of the worst chaos, though. Yeah, there might be a car, but there might not be. So, something else to think about. Appropriating a car? No, because it's just too much. You live in a city, in a central city, and it's going to be crowded. You would never get out of there if you try appropriating a car first, darn bracelet. Motorcycle. Bugger, 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 bugger. Let's... Let's motorcycle, because walking will still take a lot of time. The motorcycle seemed like a good idea at the time, except that when we arrived at his building, the first thing I saw was him outside prepping his ride together with a group of similarly attired, similarly equipped motorcycle guys. So much for borrowing a motorcycle then. He recognized me when I approached. He looked pretty distracted, packing up the saddlebags on the motorcycle with all kinds of things, but he stopped for a second to talk. Do we have that? Okay. Hello, I see you are making your escape. Would you happen to have a spare slot in your escape machine? He said he was headed toward a fallout shelter. When I asked him what he was talking about, he told me there's an old shelter down on 3rd under the rat bar. Your old hangout? What are the odds? Anyway, he said he could take me, that he knew the owner of the place. Sounds like a good alternative. What did you think? Well, Chess immediately said no thanks. He looked at me. What did you tell him? Shoot. It's, it's hard to think logically about these things because you could survive. Could survive. This is a very good chance of surviving. But if you go, there's a possibility that all of you will die. You, Chess, his sister, everybody. But there's also the chance that you could save her. And that chance is better than being selfish and forcing Chess to try to save somebody all on his own. So let's go get her sister. So no daring escape into the sunset on your motorcycle with bombs going off behind you. What a pathetic excuse for a power fantasy this dream of yours is. Oh, that was rude. Rude! Rude! Hmm. I don't think it was- it ever was a power fantasy. 
or necessarily fantasy at all. Anyway, I still had to, I still had to make a choice, and I had already lost a lot of time. Fudge. Oh, this is so tough. I don't know. Spoiler alert. I would so die in the apocalypse. I would be one of the first ones dead in this kind of situation. After the fact, if I'm still alive, I would be the best person to have. But when it comes to this stuff, getting into the apocalypse, I am the worst. So I wouldn't know what to do. So we're going to, we're gonna walk past the worst. I hope I didn't just kill all of us. I decided walking was the best option. The whole downtown area was gridlocked, cars everywhere, people running down the sidewalk since the sirens blaring. It was like one of those disaster movies. No hope of driving anywhere at this rate. But where was everyone going? Most of them were going home, I think. People were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. And there you were, running away from home. Once I made my decision, I stuck to it. No matter how much I was filled with doubt, half an hour. Half an hour was nothing, nothing at all, but luckily that estimate was completely wrong. Sometimes I'll walk half an hour in the wrong direction just because I stubbornly refuse to believe I'm lost. Was that supposed to be poetic? I didn't know what was the right direction, but I did try to get there as fast as possible, although that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. I was swept up in the mass of people and manhandled in the wrong direction more than once. Shouldn't Chess know where his sister lives? Follow him. Every few minutes I stopped to consult the map to make sure I was going in the right direction. Thank heavens we decided to take it. Was there any danger? Like people attacking each other or something? No, I thought we were all going in the same direction. But then I realized that the crowd was heading somewhere I hadn't planned to go. A subway station. What did you do? I was swept along. It was that or get trampled or pinned against the, some wall. I finally managed to disentangle myself at the stalled mass of people just outside the entrance. Apparently it was closed and people were trying to break through the gates. By the time I was out through, I had lost a lot of time. Time, yes. Isn't that the thing you're fighting here? How far away were you planning on getting? I hope I read that right. Well, a lot further than I had gotten at that point, I could practically see my apartment building. But the crowd was slowly thinning at least, and I actually saw a vehicle in motion. An ambulance weaving between stalled cars with its sirens blaring. What did you do? <sighs> Should we appropriate a car? because walking seems to be pretty bad, but driving would also be really bad. Follow the ambulance. That's what they did in Die Hard 3. Follow the ambulance. So we're gonna try following the car. Try getting, I'm still not sure. Oh, I'm still not sure how you are ethically justifying this to yourself. I was scared out of my wit, and it seemed like a good idea at the time. Fair enough. So how did you go about it? I, um, kind of just jumped into the first open door I found. Of course, there was no key, because the driver still had it. He had just been on the other side of the car, seeing me sitting there. He had a minor apoplep... Apoplectic? Oh my gosh, English words, I don't even know. And ran at me, keys in hand. Okay, we're about to get it. Damn it, Alice. I knew you weren't car thief material. I panicked when I saw him coming and went for the door. He saw me do it and tried to stop me, but in my squirrely state, I managed to close it in his face and then immediately lock it. Of course, he did have the key, but I managed to crawl out the passenger door before he got the door open again. Lucky, lucky. Hey, it was my first attempt at car theft, even if it didn't go very well. I'm assuming you stopped after this. I skulked around for a bit longer, but I didn't dare try another car. The next guy might have a gun in his hand, not the keys. So finally I decided to stop wasting time and start walking. 
What have I been trying to do this whole time? Shouldn't you be finding some kind of shelter? Where's Chess at this point? Is Chess still with me? Am I still with Chess? Are we still gonna go find his sister? I'm going to assume we're still with Chess, so no. Ah, Chess's single-mindedness was what led me. I was pretty sure this was a monumental mistake and that we'd get caught outside and killed for sure, but I couldn't just leave him, so we kept walking. So how did that work out for you? You think it was easy? People had driven out into the sidewalks and left their cars. Everything was a mess. I tried going down the main highway, but it proved pointless and I had to backtrack. It, I didn't say it was easy. Did you consider running? I half ran and jogged as much as I could, but it felt like being late for class. I got tired almost immediately while the goal was still as far away as ever. Chess wanted to go faster, but he slowed down when he saw I was struggling. The worried look on his face went nowhere, though. Poor Chess. I kind of feel bad for him. And... And, well, once I got away from the downtown area, things were s much smoother. Ooh, sorry. I ran as fast as I could, as far as I could. No bombs, still no bombs. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my luck, but I knew I was pushing it now. What did you do? We were getting closer, so we kept walking. So did you make it? Maybe the bombs were just a scare. No, they weren't. I saw it as a glow high above the town. What? You were outside when the bombs fell? I thought... I don't know. I thought I'd had time to get away, but I'd just wasted too much of it somehow. I was out on the street when the initial shockwave came. There was just... No duck and cover could have saved any of us. Any of us there from that, I don't think. Okay. The next thing I know, I am showered in glass as every window above us shatters. Cars swerved off the road and crashed. Bedlam and light. Bright, bright light. I tried to crawl out of the way when something hit me. Maybe a piece from a building, I don't know. I blacked out. You have a really fucked up imagination, Alice. I don't. It didn't feel like a dream. That's the thing, because you don't wake up in dreams, do you? But I did. Bleeding alone out on the street. What did you see? Finally, a change in something. <laughs> I saw a burning city. Ash rained down, and downtown, far too close, a mushroom cloud just staring me in the face. It was the end of the world. I just knew that there and then. Jeez. Or geez. <laughs> no, it was geez, I'm sorry. And then there was a streak of light and it was actually almost beautiful as it fell from space. Just a streak of light at only a different music, at only a slight angle. I just had to think, no, we've had enough before it hit. What's my voice trying to do? For some reason, I elected to stare right at it when it impacted above the ground in a terrible fireball. Ugh, please tell me the dream ended there. Here, there. Yeah, I didn't really see it though. But I died, eventually, in the dark. And, and thus concluded my dream. Well, that was interesting. What do you think? I think it felt incomplete, like there was something missing that wasn't the way it was supposed to end, you know? Dreams are supposed to end in certain ways? This one was, I think. It felt like it was trying to tell me something, but I wasn't listening close enough, closely enough. Maybe you can try again next night. See if you hear the same recording. Speaking of, what frequency was this on? That's, um, that's the weird part. When I tried to see, I realized I had hit the right channel and that I, and that it was in fact reading Alice in Wonderland. And this isn't exactly some obscure number station frequency on the AM bands. Well, maybe you'll dream it next night again anyway. That's the good thing with dreams. You can always dream them again. And maybe do something different the second time around.
Please don't tell me that's it. Please don't tell me that's it. Well, that was that. I don't know what to think. I was really hoping there'd be more um, choices involved, more movement involved, more something. It was literally an interactive story and I don't mind that. But it just didn't seem like there was enough choice. So maybe it's just because I got boring old default Alice. Maybe it's because I was stupid with my decisions. It's probably why I died is because I was stupid with my decisions. I enjoyed the story. I was really excited to what... I was really excited to see what was going to happen and I was kind of immersed in what Alice's dream was but I just... Uh, like I've been saying I just wish there was more. I really hope this whole thing's been worth it. I really hope you enjoyed this. Maybe we'll come back to it because I might want to try Dark Alice. See how she dies. If she dies. Maybe maybe I can be smarter with, in my apocalyptic decisions. <laughs> anyway, but the game is free on Steam if you guys want to check it out. And I do recommend you do because there are so many different endings. There are different kinds of Alice's. You can customize your Alice. So maybe you'll actually survive the apocalypse as opposed to me. But that is all I have for this video. Thank heavens it's over. I'm sorry, but this kind of stressed me out a little bit. If you enjoyed this video anyway, give it a like. Thank you, you beautiful people for watching and stay weird. Bye. Oh, this actually made me tired. And it's only like two in the afternoon.